Are your business finances keeping you awake at night? Do you wish your cash would last longer and stretch further? In this show, I'm joined by Richard Mason, and we're going to show you how you can make your cash work harder for you and your business. It's time to love your business with Love Your Business TV. Here's your host, Adrian Peck. Go for it. So good afternoon and welcome and welcome to Love Your Business TV. I am Adrian Peck. I am the founder and owner of Better Never Stops. We deliver business advice and coaching programs to entrepreneurs and business owners who run and want to run uh, million pound size businesses. Uh, I we be in this side of the show every single week. Uh, if I can get the buttons to work, uh, we go live on uh, YouTube and Facebook. We're also, you can get us, catch up with us on Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, and uh, Google Podcasts as, week, uh, as well. So this week, uh, I am really excited to be joined uh, by Richard Mason. We're going to be talking about cash flow and how you can make your cash flow work harder, um, particularly prominent in uh, in today's environment. Um, and uh, I've literally just heard the news this afternoon that EasyJet have shut um, two of their sites uh, at Stanton and um, uh, and uh, Newcastle. So you can see that these things are starting to dig deep now. So I think it's really poignant that we have Richard on the show this, this afternoon. Uh, so good afternoon, Richard, and welcome. Uh, hi, Adrian. Thank you for having me here. Great to be with you. So tell us, Richard, a little bit in terms of your, of your background and, and why have I got you on this show? Uh, well, good question. Um, hopefully to uh, help businesses uh, who, are, who are facing challenges with cash flow. Um, a bit about me. Uh, I uh, left school when I was 18 in 1988, which obviously gives my age away, uh, and went to work for NatWest uh, when you joined a bank for life in those days, um, and uh, um, spent the next seven years being schooled, educated, exposed to uh, the SME marketplace as it went through the recession in the early 90s. It was a really interesting um, learning curve. And I think the experience I gained in that in that first seven years of my career has really uh, paved the way for the rest of it, uh, where I have worked with um, uh, SMEs on an ongoing basis, looking at their funding and cash flow needs. Um, it's a really vibrant sector, um, but it also has its challenges. Um, and the more I've worked in it, the more interested I've become in, in, in helping businesses uh, meet those needs uh, to become successful and to become bigger businesses. Fantastic. And, and what kind of size businesses are you, are you working with, Richard? Uh, good question. Uh, we tend to work with businesses anything between half a million and five million turnover. Uh, we've been outside of that range at both ends of the spectrum before. But if you look at 80 percent of what we do, it falls within that that uh, catchment. Fantastic. And what, and what sort of kind of sorts of businesses are they? Are they manufacturing? Uh, what, what, what all sorts. Kind of uh, I, one of the great things about this about this uh, sector is that you never know what the next phone call is going to bring. So <laughs> we've worked with, work with jewellery shops. Uh, we have worked with manufacturing businesses. Uh, I've been involved in a coal mine before. Uh, I had a client who was building a, a, a nuclear bunker. Um, wow. We've been all over the country. We've been to Northern Ireland. So that is one of the great things about about this marketplace is you just you know you get involved with all sorts of businesses and all sorts of great people. Fantastic, and and that leads me on. So um, I've I've uh, put out an email and some uh, a link on on LinkedIn yesterday as well, asking yeah. some some uh, questions and knowing that you were on the show uh, mm -hmm. and knowing how um, cash flow and, and finances and businesses is, is pretty hard work for a lot of business owners. Uh, so we've got uh, three really key questions that we're going okay. to fire at you, to Richard. We're going to really stretch you this afternoon and see, uh, okay. you know, get the get the iron out of you. So the, the first one I've got in was sent in from Paul. Yeah. Um, and uh, Paul says, uh, we never seem to have enough money at the end of each month. Um, yeah, so more, take, yeah. us, take us through that, Richard. One of the phrases I often hear is there is too much month for the money. Um, <laughs> you look at the 25th of the month and it's like why can't it be the end um this is this is this is a really um good question and there are a lot of businesses out there that focus more on profit than on cash flow profit is a great thing it really is good but it's how that profit that translates into cash that is really important 
Um, and part of the challenge there, particularly for growing businesses, is that when all their profit goes back into funding that growth, it brings some challenges from a cash perspective. Um, one of the things we do when we when we meet a business is that I run through a series of questions. I think the sexy term is diagnostic. I'm not sure it's that clever, but we run through a series of questions just to understand the challenges a business is facing. And time and again, it's not about the profitability of the business. It's more about the working capital cycle. So it's how quickly are their debtors paying? How quickly are they paying their creditors? Where are they with HMRC? Um, what does their cash flow management look like? And it's those getting into those four or five areas um, and, and, and understanding the, the dynamics of the business that really gives us the, the keys that are the answer to this question. Um, making sure that they're getting a good level of credit from their suppliers, incredibly important. Making sure their debtors pay to terms that have been agreed, very important. Um, time and again, businesses that are, uh, small businesses particularly, are, um, are the victim to big businesses just not paying their bills because they, they don't want to. Um, we've got a client at the moment who's not been paid or is a month late on payment uh, from a particular client, and that is causing huge issues with cash flow. And th there isn't the kind of buffer in there to absorb that, so it really is a question of, of working out how we deal with it. We've come up with an answer on that one, which is good, but it's, it's a situation we see very regularly. Um, and the key to it is having a plan, understanding on a daily basis what your cash balances are and projecting forward at least, you know, ideally 13 weeks or three months, but certainly to the end of the month um, that says, you know, this is this is what our expected cash balance is and how we know um, it's going to actually work out. You know, we're going to end the month, which is today, funnily enough with x thousand pounds in our bank account or with some headroom in our overdraft so planning is everything on that one um and we do a lot of work with businesses uh where those challenges um come up at the end of every month and they breathe a sigh of relief when they get through another month end and they can you know get some cash in from that again isn't it go again absolutely yeah so what, what's the kind of the um if there's kind of one mistake that there's possibly made that's caused it what what's been that kind of one overwhelming mistake um, it's it's living in hope is the is the big mistake. So someone mm -hmm. on about the tenth of the month has sat there and, and got the envelope out and a fairly small envelope and tried to work it out and thinks it'll be okay, but isn't planning or having a contingency fund for the thing that inevitably comes from left field. Um, mm -hmm. It's either a creditor wants supply, uh, one of their creditors wants paying, wasn't expecting that, or one of their debtors debtors doesn't pay. Um, yeah, and it, it's just it's just knowing what the different moving parts are in that uh, calculation, uh, and how they manage and mitigate that risk. Um, one of the things we one of the things we do say to people is, you know, is there a minimum level of cash in the bank that you need at all times, and if so, what is that number? Yeah, uh, and that you know, it's it's as we when we meet customers talking about it um, and just it, just interrogating that scenario it is often left to the bookkeeper or the finance controller to deal with this when really it should be the senior leadership and management team of the business that is managing that process indeed yeah and i, I see it quite a lot with business owners. and i think some of it is down to the fact that the um this is quite alien to a lot of business owners i mean most of the business owners certainly the ones i work with uh, normally come from quite a technical background they're right. really really good at what doing what they do um, but the this is kind of a little bit left field and alien to them in terms of well you know I'm good at maths but I don't quite understand business finance and uh, and to be fair to them unless they've gone and done a you know some sort of course on it it's going to be a bit alien to them so they tend to kind of like if if I give it to somebody else hopefully the problem kind of goes away and that's kind of yeah. the, the bit I feel from all the time yeah okay brilliant uh, hopefully that for paul has um answered that question so we'll move on now to um drilling number two um okay. which is, uh, question number two for nigel uh, yeah. which we've just won a nice project uh, but we need cash before we get paid um our bank has turned us down um who can help and again i see this a lot with um you know have all that joy of winning that big project and then of course the next thing is okay brilliant but we've actually we're not gonna get paid for 90 days um you know at best type stuff 
yeah this is again this is this is very common um and the answer is that, that well there's three or four answers here um there there could be a scenario where you just go to the bank and say we'd like an overdraft and the bank yeah as nigel has said turn around and says no we can't help um there are various sources of short-term funding that can be brought into the business um that that could get it going uh, but that's not always easy and not always quick to arrange at short notice. One of the things that we often say to people when they when they talk about bidding for a big contract is, well, it's great. You've worked out what your profit margin might be in that contract. But how is the cash going to work? Actually saying to the client, you know, we're, we're, we'll bid for this project. and We'll do it at this price. But these are the payment milestones or you need to pay a certain amount at the front end, which is going to cover our costs in terms of suppliers and creditors is really very important and um, i've worked with two businesses where they won a huge contract and um, and we actually ended up going back to them and saying to them that now that now that you've agreed the contract we need to agree the payment terms and the yeah. client said well we're just going to pay on our, on our normal 60 days and we said well that's not that isn't going to work and in one case we actually got the client to come to the table and support the business um, by paying quicker or they actually made a payment up front and in the other case um the way we worked it was that we actually got the client to buy the materials using their strong credit rating which actually got us a better result all round yes the price went down slightly because there was no profit margin being passed on on the on the materials but from a cash flow perspective the benefit was huge so it's not all about what's the profit on it it's around how does the cash flow work and yeah. actually including that if you if you if you're putting a tender document in can be really important because um, sometimes the winning of the project causes you the biggest headache because you don't know how to fund it. Um, so it is it, it is important that that's considered um, as you as you bid for these projects. And then it's very much a question of understanding how that works through and, and really goes from there. So you mentioned in there about the, there are some options in terms of short term lending. Yeah. Um, obviously, if the bank has said no, they, 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 they might be against the buffers already in terms of their uh, of their overdrafts and stuff um yeah. you know what 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 other options they got in terms of that short-term lending there are there are a good question there are a number of lenders out there who will provide funding in a matter of days to a business and that might be either repayable short term or it might be repayable over say two years Let, let's just be clear short-term funding is not cheap money you're talking around an interest rate of maybe two percent per month so over a year it's very expensive but actually, if it enables you to access something which you can then repay quickly, actually, it's not a bad thing to do. Um, so it is possible, um, but but the terms can be quite um, uh, onerous or penal. Um, and it, it really is a question of, yeah, as much as you can, working this out before you win the project rather than after you win the project. Um, the other yeah. thing to then do, uh, again, we've done this with a client, is that we actually went and renegoti renegotiated their terms with their suppliers. Um, so we got an extra 30 days credit. Uh, and again, in that instance, that just gave us the kind of cash buffer that we needed to work that out and go from there. Excellent. So so part of that is, from what you're saying, is actually they need to understand uh, when they go into it, because it is yeah. quite expensive. The short-term bit can be quite expensive, but actually if they use it wisely and um and uh, they have a route out of it very quickly yeah then actually they can use it to their advantage correct yeah yeah it is it is it can be good but it's not a quick yeah it's a it, you yeah, know don't jump into it lightly yeah understand the costs and the exit position and go from there excellent brilliant great stuff there richard uh, so um the third one we've got then is from stephen um, um our bank has just withdrawn our facility uh, where can we go now? I, I kind of assume that they's, he's had some sort of funding in there and they now um, have pulled it out because the market's changed as it as it has done at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Th this is, again, this is something that the banks do, unfortunately. Yeah, sometimes it's a sector issue. Um, so a, a bank will look and say, you know, we just don't like the construction sector anymore. Uh, that's happened yeah. at least twice in the last 15 years. Uh, there may be a change in your credit rating. They may not like a recently set a recently filed set of accounts, um, but um, an overdraft facility is always repayable on demand. So a bank is within its rights to actually do this. Okay, um, banks are still the primary funder of UK SMEs, 
but there are there's an increasing number of alternatives here um, most banks at this point will introduce it in, introduce you to their invoice finance provider usually in-house and that's okay but invoice finance isn't for everybody um, there are other providers out there where funding can be raised at a sensible price that allow, that gives the business the working capital to 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 move forward so the key here really is engaging with um, a good advisor and making sure that they are um, capable of and can bring to the table appropriate funders so that we all so that you know the business can get access to the cash it needs um, to then move forward so did, did the the banks then um, obviously they want repaying on their money as well as I assume quite or will they kind of leave some funding in there um, the answer could be both on that. Um, some banks might say, look, you know, we're not happy with the overdraft at 50 grand, but we're prepared to leave it at 25. Right. Uh, some banks might just turn around and say, you know, we want, uh, you know, we're giving you a month's notice to repay. I think, I think that I think the shortest one I ever had was a client who was given 21 days notice. I met him on day two and we had him refinanced by day 19. Wow. Um, so that was a real victory. And that was 380,000. I think we raised in that time. Um, that business has since gone on to repay all its debt and is doing doing really well now. But I remember when I met um, the chap who owned the business. You know, he's he, he, he yeah he he didn't know where to go, and this was the last throw of the dice. Thankfully, it worked, um, and you know we got a really positive answer out of it. Um, but the bank got all their money back, and we had a conversation with them halfway through the process just to see if there was any additional time they could provide. They were very clear that. Uh, you know the terms of their letter stood uh, and therefore they weren't going to change their mind blimey that's quite um it must have been quite scary the business owner yeah yeah it was yeah uh, but you pulled it out of the bag richard that's the main thing yes absolutely um client client was happy um you know i'm still in touch with them now 10 12 years on um, and yeah, his, his business has been transformed he, he he put a turnaround plan in place then um and has stuck to it uh, and now doesn't yeah, has no debt with the bank with the bank well, with any lender at all actually so he's done really well absolutely fantastic so um uh, that's the, the kind of questions i've had in terms of thrown in which is uh, really good i think you've um, been put you we put you to the test and you've come up ro come up roses that's good <laughs> uh, so i've got i've got one more thing really which is really yeah. um you know, given all your vast experience um, and you kind of live in this field every single day, um, mm -hmm. you're kind of living and breathing and helping these businesses. What's yep. the kind of um, the one piece of advice that you you perhaps always give to business owners or you wish they'd always listen to? Um, what's that kind of one really outstanding piece of advice that you give them that we can give them as a go away action today? I think the key thing um, and you know, if I, if I cast my mind back to all the different businesses I've seen and I ask it every time I go and see someone is, have you got a cash flow plan? And that cash flow plan is about what does the next six to 12 weeks look like? Because um, that period gives you enough time if that cash flow plan looks OK to implement a longer term plan. But if that cash flow plan isn't there and they're saying we need money in three weeks or else this business is dead, you know, for any advisor, that's a really tough call. Um, yeah. Whereas if you can at least see there's a cash flow plan that allow that gives you time to come up with a longer term solution, you've got a chance. Um, I've been in too many businesses. I was in one just before Christmas of last year where we had four or five days to be able to raise finance to pay the wages, which we achieved. But boy, it would have been easier not to have had to have done that. So from that perspective, um, you know, that, that was a real challenge. Um, so Excellent. yeah, a good cash flow plan is absolutely cash awesome. flow plan, cash flow plan, cash flow plan. Brilliant. Okay, okay. that's fantastic. Um, Richard, if if people want to get in touch with you, what's kind of what's the best way? Um, website is great. Um, my details are on there. Always yeah, happy absolutely. to have a, always happy to have a conversation with people. Um, yeah, by phone initially just to just to find out their circumstances uh, and see how we might be able to help them okay so it's ludgatefinance.co.uk that's your um best and your email address richard uh, richard m at ludgatefinance.co.uk fantastic and i'll put all the links of course in the show notes um, right. and then go back to your website so thank you richard um it's been absolutely fantastic to um have you on the show um hopefully we can have you back again in the, again in the future be delighted to join you be great stuff as well. Thank you very much, Richard. And um, 
And uh, yeah, thank you. No problem. Thanks again to Richard for sharing uh, his knowledge and expertise this afternoon. It's been really, really great. And uh, hopefully you've got some really good um, some really good content experience out of that uh, to help you with your businesses. And we've also put together a cash review. So this is an online instant report that you can get that will dig really deep into your finances, your business finances, and show you uh, hopefully some of the areas that you can improve and improve quite quickly. It looks across the whole of your business in terms of those finance aspects. Um, and I say it's going to take about four or five minutes for you to fill out the uh, the kind of questionnaire uh, that's on uh, online. And then you get an instant report out the back of it. It's a 12-page report. And I say it recovers every part of it. So it's bettingneverstops.global and then forward slash cash review. So better never stops dot global forward slash cash review and you can get that instant financial management report uh, on your business. Um, as always, uh, you can get my book, How to Fall Back in Love with Your Business, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Rediscovering Your Mojo and Enjoying Every Day. Uh, that's got um, oodles and oodles of uh, free business advice and help and support uh, for you, as well as our website, which is bit better never stops dot global. And if you go onto free business tools, uh, you can get all the uh, free uh, tools, uh, working diagrams, uh, and the um, downloadable planners, and all sorts. You can go on there. So uh, you know, please fill your boots uh, and um, and get that. If you want a copy of my free book, uh, if you want a copy of my book for free, even uh, just send me an email, Adrian dot peck at peckuk.com and I'll quite gladly send you a free copy of my book. You can catch up on previous shows on YouTube, Facebook, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts and of course on loveyourbusiness.tv. Remember to stay safe. If you want to reach out to me, it's adrian.peck at peckuk.com and remember, better never stops. Love Your Business TV. Thank you. Join us next week and don't forget to subscribe.